Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mick. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on custom collection view layouts. In the previous episode, you implemented the basic stretchy header layout, which looked pretty good as is. So we could have left things there and moved on to a new layout in this video. But we really wanted to pump some juice into this layout. So instead, in this video, you're gonna learn how to add some depth to the header as the user scrolls, by once again leveraging some custom layout attributes, as well as applying some auto layout magic to handle some image scaling. I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised with the end result, as it's a really nice visual effect that's relatively cheap to implement. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video. This time, as the user scrolls, not only does the header stretch, but the background image shrinks by the same amount providing a really cool sense of depth. When the user finishes scrolling, both the header and the background image snap back to their original size and position. The image scaling is handled entirely by auto layout. The trick to achieving this effect is to use an oversized image view and rely on the header to clip its subviews to its bounds. Then, as the user scrolls, you can pass the offset of that scroll from the layout to the header using custom layout attributes. You can then use that offset to update the height constraint of the image view. And because the width of the image view is pinned to its height and the image view is centered both vertically and horizontally in its super view, everything scales accordingly. It's also worth noting that for this effect to work properly, you need to set the content mode on the image view to scales to fit. And this is because you want the actual image to scale as the containing image view scales. And then when the user finishes scrolling, everything happens again, but in reverse, which allows the image view and its image to snap back to their original size. If you want to supplement the base layer attributes with custom layer attributes, which is what we need to do here, then just like we did for the Pinterest layout, you need to subclass UI collection view layout attributes. Once you have that subclass, you can then declare any custom properties as well as override both copy with zone and is equal. Remember, it's really important to override those two methods as we discussed in depth in video two, because the collection view copies layout attributes as part of the layout process as well as only applying layout attributes that have changed. In order to access our custom layout attributes outside the layout itself, we need to override the method apply layout attributes in any subclass of UI collection reusable view, such as cells and supplementary views. And it's the latter that are used to implement headers and footers in UI collection view flow layout. In the previous video, you implemented this layout which stretches the header as the user scrolls. And in this video, we're gonna take things a step further because what we're gonna do is we're gonna shrink the header graphic by the same amount as the user scrolls, which is gonna give this really cool sense of depth. So let's start now by jumping back into Xcode. And we're gonna open up our DIY layout subclass. And the first thing we're gonna do is create a subclass of collection view layout attributes just like we did with the Pinterest layout, because we're gonna to need to pass the delta Y value from the layout to the header view. So we'll call these DIY layout attributes, and we'll make them a subclass of UI collection view layout attributes. And then we can define our delta Y property, which is a CG float, and we'll give it a default value of zero. Now, as before, we need to override both copy with zone and is equal. So I'm gonna do that now. That's copy with zone done. And now for is equal. And with that done, we just need to go and update our DIY layout class to take advantage of our new layout attributes. So the first thing that we need to do 
is implement the class method, layout attributes class. And this returns an instance of any class. And we'll just return our DIY layout attributes.self. And then we need to update our layout attributes for elements in Rect. The first one is where we do the cast. We need to use DIY layout attributes. And then just below where we set the frame, we can then set the delta y value to the delta y. And that's all the changes we need to make to our DIY layout class. So the next thing we need to do is make some visual changes that we can do in Interface Builder. So let's jump over to main.storyboard. Just gonna make some room. And then if we select inside the header view, the header image view, and we're just gonna remove all the existing constraints. And you'll see why we're doing that in a minute. So now we're gonna add some new constraints. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the height to 600. And we're gonna add that constraint. And then this is where the clever part comes in. We're gonna control drag from the header back to itself in the document outline. And then we're gonna choose aspect ratio. And then in the size inspector, select the constraint you've just created and change the multiplier to the ratio one to one. And then we can select the view and then update the frames. And this will give us a image view that's 600 by 600. And now we just need to center that. So we can do that here, center in container, vertical center in container, update the items of new constraints. And now the image view is exactly where it was before. It's centered in that space, but it's now much bigger. And the width is always gonna match the height and the idea is we're going to use the delta y value that we're going to pass to the header to manipulate the height. And at the same time, that will therefore manipulate the width. So the last thing we need to do is just change the mode of this image view to scale to fill. And this will shrink it as the image view shrinks and then therefore providing that sense of, of depth. The next thing that we need to do is we need to have a way to change the constant of the height constraint so we're going to create an outlet to do that so if we open schedule header view we're just going to select the first part there and we're going to call this background image view height layout constraint and make it an instance of ns layout constraint and then we can jump back to the storyboard, connect that up. So right click on the schedule header view and we'll connect background image view height layout constraint to the height constraint. And now jump back to our schedule header view class and we want to add a private property called background image view height. We're gonna set this as a CG flow and give it a default value of zero. And basically this is going to hold the initial height and this is what we're going to use to manipulate the overall height. And we're going to capture the initial height in a wait from nib. So we'll just add our call to super. And then we can set the background image view height to the CG rect get height of the background image view dot bounds. And then the last step Pulling all this together is to override apply layout attributes. And the first thing we need to do is add our call to super, passing in the layout attributes. And then we can cast the attributes into our subclass, DIY layout attributes. And then we can go right ahead and manipulate that layout constraint. So background image view height layout constraint dot constant equals background image view height minus attributes dot delta y and now if you build and run you can now see that as we stretch the background image scales appropriately and it gives that sense of depth 
And that's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we like to leave off with a challenge. The sense of depth that you've added to the header as the user scrolls is a really nice effect. But you can actually take it one step further and really accentuate the sense of depth by having the foreground image, in this case the RW DEFCON logo, scale in the opposite direction. So your challenge this time is to take everything that you've learned in this video and apply it to the foreground image view. Remember, the trick is to set up the auto layout constraints correctly and then you can take advantage of the custom layout attributes you're already passing to the header. As always, you can find all the details in the challenge document but do be sure to give this a go yourself first before reaching for that solution. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.